hi in this video let's discuss few important points pertaining to functioning of certain oral hypoglycemic drugs so we'll start with the question again a patient has been prescribed glipizide for type 2 diabetes arrange the following events leading to reduction in plasma glucose in order of occurrence as a result of this drug glipizide so glipizide is nothing but it's a second generation sulfonyl ureas right so before going into the arrangement of these options first let's briefly discuss the functioning the mechanism of action of sulfonyl ureas as well as insulin because ultimately these sulfonyl ureas they stimulate or promote release of insulin from the pancreatic beta cells thereby the insulin acts on the blood glucose and helps in lowering the blood glucose levels right so sulfonyl ureas basically we have various generations first and second generation and the drug mentioned here glipizide comes under second generation sulfonyl urea so these sulfonyl ureas they lower blood glucose levels in case of normal patients as well as in cases where the patients are suffering from type 2 diabetes but not in type 1 diabetes because for these drugs to act there has to be a minimum of 30 percent functional beta cells in the pancreas so there has to be minimum 30 percent of functional beta cells in pancreas so these drugs act only in type 2 diabetics and even in normal patients they lower the blood glucose levels but not in type 1 diabetic patients right so the mechanism of action of these sulfonyl ureas is they initially block ATP sensitive potassium channels present within the beta cells of islets of pancreas right so because of this blockage or closure of these ATP sensitive potassium channels there will be depolarization so as a result of this depolarization there will be triggering of calcium influx within the cells and due to this calcium influx there will be degranulation with subsequent release of insulin so this leads to degranulation and release of insulin right so this is how the sulfonyl ureas act so they basically close or block atp sensitive potassium channels in the beta cells of pancreas and which leads to depolarization as a result this triggers influx of calcium ions into the cells leading to degranulation and release of insulin right and once this insulin is released they bind to insulin receptors which are present in almost all the cells in the body so as you can see an insulin receptor this is a plasma membrane this is a cell the insulin receptor has two alpha units and two beta units which are combined by disulfide bonds right and these alpha subunits receive insulin they act as a receptor for insulin whereas these beta subunits they contain an enzyme tyrosine protein kinases and these enzymes the moment there is insulin binding here right there will be a series of cascade complex dephosphorylation as well as phosphorylation reactions happening and because of these phosphorylation reactions which are being mediated by tyrosine protein kinases there will be translocation of GLUT4 from the cell within the cell towards the plasma membrane so this GLUT4 is nothing but a glucose transporter so because of this series of cascade phosphorylation reactions taking place after binding of insulin to the receptor there will be translocation or movement of this GLUT4 transporter from within the cell towards the plasma membrane and as a result of which there will be influx of glucose and this glucose is finally converted to glycosin and stored within the cells or in the liver so the main function of either a sulfonyl urea or an insulin it's a hypoglycemia to reduce blood glucose levels and to store the glucose in the form of fuel within the cells right so as a result this glucose influx happens and it is stored in the form of glycosin and as a consequence finally this insulin or, or sulfonyl urea when taken they prevent 
the increase in free fatty acids within the blood so the consequences are very important they decrease the presence or levels of free fatty acids in blood they decrease ketone body synthesis and also they block or inhibit protein degradation in case of diabetics right this is important so these are some of the main functions of sulfonylureas as well as insulin which is being released as a consequence of these sulfonylureas right so this is in brief the mechanism of action right hope it's clear now let's come back to the question and options and discuss the various sequence of events in correct order so we have different options here right insulin release from beta cells increase in glucose uptake in target cell closing of atp sense to potassium channels movement of glut 4 to plasma membrane and stimulation of insulin receptors so as i said first this clepisad which is a second generation sulfonylurea it causes blockage or closing of atp sense to potassium channel so the first reaction that's happening is c right so closing of atp sends to potassium channel this leads to release of insulin from the beta cells as we have seen here so option a and this is followed by once the insulin is released from the beta cells there is stimulation of insulin receptor as you can see here insulin binds to the receptor present on various cells so there is stimulation of insulin receptor e followed by so after stimulation of insulin receptor there will be movement of glut4 that is a glucose transporter to the plasma membrane so as we have seen here there is translocation of this glut4 to the plasma membrane so option d and finally there is increase in glucose uptake in the target cell right option b so this is the right sequence c a e d b right so these are some of the important points pertaining to sulfonylurea and also in brief the mechanism of action of insulin